Welcome to the channel, YouTube world. The main point of these videos is to even bring awareness that there's an update to begin with. Me flapping my mouth for five minutes to tell you what it is by narrating the patch notes is just a bonus that I'm sure most people don't even like anyways. So I'm just going to share with you today the actual initial changes. Everything that was done prior, I've already rambled about for 15 minutes in a prior video, so there's no need in me actually repeating myself because they're actually repeating the patch notes, which... I don't kind of like in a way, but let's get into it. So now the main branch is at 1.2.0 and we're now moved up to 1.3.0 on the beta. So greetings, warriors of Chlamydia. I mean, Calradia. You see what I did there? That was me trying to be funny. It didn't work. It was cringy. But that was the whole point. I am the cringe comedian. So the main branch 1.2 the latest changes multiplayer crashes fix several bugs that caused the player state to be incorrect those are some of the issues that prevented players from logging in fixed a crash on clients that happened while joining a crowded server siege secured a code on the dedicated servers to possibly prevent a crash when a weapon is dropped from an agent fixed a rare server crash multiplayer design and balance troop balance batania Clan warrior troop count increased 20 to 21. Savage troop count increased to 18 from 17. Wilding troop count increased 16 to 17. Mounted warrior armor increased from 8 to 16. Mounted warrior troop count increased 9 to 16. Oath sworn armor increased 40 to 43. Empire coarser price increased from 130 to 140. Palatine guard Manavlion perk equips correct Manavlion now. Recruit speed 78 to 80. Vlandia sergeant armor decreased 41 to 37. Knight Prince increased 180 to 190. Sturgia, Brigand Speed increased 75 to 79. Var Yag, Price increased 140 to 150. Berserker Armor decreased 15 to 16. Berserker Troop Count decreased 18 to 17. Raider Troop Count increased 7 to 9. Drez Hinnick, Price increased from 170 to 180. Aserai, Skirmisher Speed increased 78 to 80. Weapon Balance, Menavlion Length decreased from 200 to 179. If you give this video a thumbs down, I'll make sure that your Manavlion length is decreased from... Never mind. Manavlion damage decreased 447 to 129. You'll get that to lower potency. Heavy Manavlion damage decreased from 177 to 166. The long Manavlion damage decreased 149 to 137. So it's like a little peewee. Previous beta hotfixes, we are going to skip over all of this because I've already talked about it. Same with the initial. So those, these are the prior hotfixes. These were the initial beta change logs. It's basically doing a recap. And as you can tell from me scrolling down, there's a lot of recapping. But I've already talked about all this. That's why I don't want to go into it again. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. You might as well just check out my other video or quite simply put, um, you know, just pause it or just click on the damn link and read them. Okay, beta 1.3.0. Let's get into that because that's new. Crashes. Fixed a rare crash that occurred when two player related events on the campaign map started at the same time. Fixed a game freeze that happened when a party is persuaded in the middle of a siege preparation. Fixed an issue where maxing out attributes and focus points crashed a game. Too much power. Performance significantly reduced scene loading times. Oh, nice. Performance improvements for battles, localization improvements, additions, and corrections for some text. Turkish localization updates. Art, three new menu backgrounds added. Added AI flea points and villages. Updated some prop lots. Fixed some mesh physics problems. Fixed some issues in the Empire Tavern scene. Fixed lot issues in the forest hideout scene. Fixed clipping issues on various clothes. Animation. Glaive attack animations added for camel riders on the campaign map. Animation overhaul of initial character creation stages. Campaign map. World map. GPU memory usage reduced. UI. Fixed an exploit in inventory that let the player take the equipment of heroes that joined the party for a quest. Here, give me that. Fixed an error while closing the game with Alt F4. Minor fixes and tweaks in scene notification pop-up character developer. Fixed a bug that caused the game to freeze while changing compared item stats with alt when there is no available item to compare in the inventory. Fixed placement of perks, full learning rate, and current skill vertical indicators in character developer. Fixed speed mount icon being shown for non-mountable animals. Minor performance improvements for SP kill feed and SP scoreboard. Fixed main party health tooltip formatting in the map info bar. 
Don't mind me. Okay, there we go. Made the character developer screen more widescreen friendly. Added destroyed and not destroyed filter options to the clan list page in the encyclopedia. Added a live dead status filter options encyclopedia hero list page. That's amazing. That's actually really, really good. You go and visit someone and where are they? They're dead. Okay. Destroyed clans banners now show up less saturated in encyclopedia pages. Loaded modules, panel, and saved games is now scrollable. So the destroyed clan banners that show up less saturated in encyclopedia, they were probably saturated in their blood. They decided to clean it up. Don't ask. Battles and sieges. Increased effect of number advantage in simulation battles. Siege assault battles now last longer in simulation. Increased effect of wall quality in siege assault simulations. Battle missions check the maturity of agents during spawning and increase age if required. As you get older, you don't necessarily become more mature. Believe me. Look at Donald Trump. Okay, that's enough of that. Fixed a problem that caused AI to fall from walls at the siege tower attachment position. During sally outs, garrisons now consider all enemy power outside of the settlement, not just parties which are in the same faction with the siege camp leader. Combat AI fixed a bug that occurred when either side was too weak in a siege. In cases like this, the more powerful side would sometimes try to charge without any path over the walls causing them to walk into walls. Fixed a rare problem with archers checking if they can see an enemy using colliders, which could cause them to face the wrong direction. Character development system increased effect of trade skill on trade penalty to 0.4% per skill point. Decreased the bonus of artisan, artisan, community and greet and great investor perks. Implement and fix cultural feats in character creation. Increased adolescence options for the Batanian culture from 4 to 6 in character creation. Fixed a bug where talking with the tutorial headman gave a large amount of charm experience. Tweaked age progression. Characters should be looking more like their age. Well, I'm in my mid-40s. I haven't shaved today, but I'm looking pretty, uh, pretty young. You think I look old now? You didn't see me when I was 20. It was terrible. I weighed 340 pounds and I looked like I was 55 years old. Maybe 60. Anyhow, clan and party. Increased chance of pregnancy if the number of children is one or two. Hero wages are no longer zero. Lord parties have more experienced troops and fewer recruits. They also use their party size limit as much as possible. Parties do not recruit prisoners of defeated parties if they are at their party size limit. This was causing some AI parties to lose their better troops because of desertion. Garrison sizes are increased a bit due to the better economical management of clan leaders. The escape chance of prisoners is reduced by 25% when they are in mobile parties or beaten over the head. It is reduced by 50% if they're kicked in the balls. No, if they are at the par player's uh, settlement. Uh, the clan leader's financial situation has an effect on raiding probability, so now poor clans want to raid more. Well, yeah, there's not a lot of rich people out there looting shit. Donate troops and inspect troops. Options were disabled for caravan, villager, and militia parties. Armies. Armies with little food now return to settlements more frequently rather than continuing their hostile plans and losing troops due to starvation. Now that's some real dedication. You're going to die even if it means I'm going to starve to death in the process. Parties and armies with a high wounded ratio now prefer resting in settlements more frequently to heal their troops. Sometimes army member parties were attacking parties more powerful than them, assuming their army would help. However, they were not attached to the army leader yet, and assistance from the army did not occur. This bug was not fixed. While heading to a settlement, NPC parties sometimes also visit other settlements. They are passing nearby on their way. This results in better recruitment. If caravans have lots of wounded troops, they also wait longer in towns to recover. When an army visits a fortification, the player, as an army follower, can open the settlement menu with the Enter Settlement option, Economy and Trade. Players can now sell goods to caravans at a reduced price. Caravans are now created with sumpter horses. Player trade with owned caravans was disabled due to balance concerns. The player now has a secondary option while creating a caravan, setting up with a higher number of better troops. However, caravan forming costs are one and a half times in this scenario. 
Crafting, the weapon becomes invisible when showing the holster is activated on crafting is fixed. Settlement actions, towns, village, castles, and hideouts. Spawn probability of mercenary troops at taverns was increased from 33 to 50%. Nice. Quests and issues. Fixed minor problems with headman needs to deliver a herd quest. Fixed minor problems and made some design changes on notable wants daughter found quest. Gang leader needs weapon quest bug fixes and improvement fixes. Fixed a crash that occurred when a player completed the quest successfully. Fixed a crash that occurred when a player decided to leave the settlement when caught by quest guards. Fixed a bug that caused a quest log progress to reset after save and load. Fixed a notification bug when quest guards took the player's weapons. Improvements. Reward gold formula has changed. Alternative companion solution duration formula has changed. Required trade roguery skill for companion formula is changed. Requested weapon amount formula has changed. So a lot of shit's changed. Stealing weapon chance for quest guards formula has changed. From now on, things have changed. Uh, quest guards will stop the player more often. Quest giver will no longer request crossbows. They have moved on to AK-47s. Fixed a problem that caused a conversation to become stuck when the player clicks the dialogue option about the task you gave me to the captured by bounty hunters quest giver after saving and loading. Fixed the investigate Noretzi's Foley quest progression regression bug that happened when a noble died that the player had talked to before. Ah. Conversations and encounters. If the player is mounted, they will spawn a bit further from a conversation character when using the talk button in the settlement menu. Disabled spawning with a horse and map conversation missions encounters to prevent seeing horse ears and horse harness. As long as they're not seeing their horse... Okay. Fixed a bug that caused some conversation agents to stay focused on the player even after the conversation ends. Fixed the waiting for nightfall bar resetting problem in hideouts when the player opens up a menu. Other, shield hit point values have been rebalanced based on their tier and material used. Peasants can no longer be upgraded into watchmen directly. So what happens? They have to be beaten in the process? Stats of some faction army troops have been fixed and rebalanced in order to maintain faction balance. Tournaments will now have exclusive weaker and easier to break shields because they're made out of paper mache. Our storyline brother now wears cheaper armor, so players are less likely to strip him of his gear. <laughs> Hi, you don't look as nice. I don't have that sudden urge to rip the shit right off your back. All Sturgeon faction troops now use round shields. They also use round shields that are more fitting to their level and abilities. Fixed a bug that caused players who continued the game from old save files to be unable to starve. That's kind of a good bug. You know what I mean? Multiplayer game modes. The reason for losing sometimes not showing up in captain mode is fixed. Troop face randomization is in captain mode spawn is fixed. Other miscellaneous. Added a cooldown for players who have left the game more than the allowed times in a given time frame. Currently, players who left the matchmaker games two times in the last three hours will be blocked from matchmaking for 15 minutes. Note these values any times without requiring a patch if necessary. Or if we encounter issues, I don't play multiplayer anyways. Server and network. Factions for matchmaker games are now evenly distributed, fixed a crash while entering a multiplayer team deathmatch. Usually when you crash hard, it ends up in death. Official custom games now require anti-cheat. I don't cheat. I do, but it's in single player and I don't care. UI. Added server status visual system and HUD. Minor tweaks and improvements to the matchmaking tab. Troop type icons on top, near player avatars, is now 35% bigger while in the class selection screen. Fixed character customization clothing option not working. Both. Crashes. Pressing escape key on the loading screen causes an infinite loop. An infinite loop is fixed. Art. Lighting adjustments. Fixed parallax. Problems on some of the stone meshes. Animations. New hand shield active. Defend animations. Defend hand shield direction angles are polished. Removed blend durations for some of the rider fall animations. New idle animations added for camels. Riders falling from horses can only block when close to standing. Audio fixed an issue with sound devices being disabled in config files. UI added crosshair outlines to improve crosshair visibility. Added new vertical aim correction. Option to gamely options. 
game like gameplay options my goodness i need to go back to bed added a new force v-sync and menus option to video options Combat AI Cavalry had a hard time adjusting their rotation and melee, and especially when two AI agents fought each other, uh, they could loop around each other. Major improvements have been made regarding this issue. Performance. Many HDD spike issues were fixed. Reduced. Oh, that's another thing. Give the video a thumbs down and I'll spike you with the... Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'll make sure you get an STD spike when you're... In okay in the game. Reduced memory allocations during battles and optimized some of the formation AI. These should reduce spikes occurring during battles. Ragdolls and dropped items performance improvements. So when you drop an item, it really ragdolls properly. Multicore performance improvements. Performance improvements for trail effects. Other. Boulder can now knock agents down. Yeah. If they're big enough, they'll, they'll knock your ass right out the They'll kill you, too. Fixed scale change of thrown boulders after they stop. Horses can no longer climb on ladders. Ah, but that was so much fun. There's ladders in the game? I must not have gotten far, because I keep starting my games over, and I keep messing around, and anyways. Corpses now receive additional blood along with their surroundings. So that's where the saturation went to from the encyclopedia. Remember? 20 minutes earlier? Anyways. And that's it. That's that's the uh, the patch notes. As you know, that was predominantly the beta, and I want to show people that you get the update automatically. Even when you're on the beta, you'll get the update. However, now that we're on, uh, anytime you see your patch note next to the game, it means you're on the beta. So you want to right click, go to properties, which I've already done. And it brings you here, and you want to go back to beta each time. It won't automatically just update. It's not assuming you want to go to the next beta. But I do, because it's been working out for me. You can even go back to the original when the game was uh, was good, but not nearly as good as it is now. And you just click on it. It's just, it's just that simple. And then you just close it, and there it is. Oh, whoops. A queue, but it did it on its own. And then it'll re-download, so the beta is kind of like two gigabytes that's that's huge because today's update like the one that you automatically get it was like 500 kilobytes i've seen gif pics that were bigger than that so anyways there's a substantial amount of stuff that comes out in the beta i don't think i'll ever do the alpha branch when they decide to do that but and i know original was like oh the beta the game's already in early access to begin with but i personally have been having an amazing time it's been fairly stable it's been incredibly playable it's probably bar none the best early access title i personally have ever played and have encountered uh that i decided to go early access on top of early access because the beta right eh, you're getting the patch early so there could still be some glitches, but uh, that comes with the territory, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So if you like the video, as always, you know what to do. You give it a thumbs up. You didn't like it. We already know what's going to happen. We already went through that through the progression of the video of what's going to happen. But if you made it this far and you actually do give it a thumbs down, there won't be any other negative repercussions on top of what is already going to happen to you. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, as always, that would obviously be great. I just hit 5,000 subscribers like a day and a half ago, and I'm already at 5,100. Wow. Like, I'm blown away. Like, what is going on? It's out of this world. It's I could go on about it, how insane it is. So yeah, you can do that. And if you don't want to, it's okay. Don't feel bad. I get on a lot of people's nerves because I'm annoying to a certain type of people. But some people, apparently 5,000, 100 people, don't think I'm that annoying. Or they just feel bad for me. Whatever the reason is, I like it. Most people I watch drive me crazy to the point where I watch my own videos. You see what I did there? That's, again, my failed attempt at cringe comedy. I'm just going to shut up now. So take care, stay isolated, and all that stuff. Stay happy, play games, get into stuff you're normally into get into it even more. And uh, I shall see all of you, maybe some of you, maybe none of you, in the next video. Bye for now.